Hi Rajesha Vijay and welcome to Film Companion South. Hi sir. It's a uh, it's, it's it's very rare that we interview this actress who's before us for two movies that are coming out. One of mm-hmm. them is this Malayalam film called Koko and the other one is the Tamil film called Karnan. But before that I want to ask you as a mass communication student mm. you said you had been exposed to a lot of world classic cinemas so i want you to just start by saying what are some of your favorite world classic cinemas there are so many films but i really like charulata na uh, even though everybody says uh, sir satyajit sir's best work is pather panchali but i feel like charulata yeah. has a, a, probably my taste but the thing is visually also it has Uh, so when tushar madhav sir used to take film studies classes he used to ask us to you know check out each frame how he has composed like you know the pillars or this that swing scene how she realizes what she has so uh, that is a, a film that just stays close to me and uh, during one of the iff case which is the kerala film festival uh, i met madhavi mukherjee oh, wow. and uh, my i couldn't i, I was like this shaking uh, <laughs> aparna sen ma'am was also there but i couldn't uh, like i couldn't talk to her and i was like charulata like that's all i could say and i was like bam and i just touched her feet and she was like uh, even she teared up a little and she was um, even though she can't speak a lot of language and she is a little old right now with whatever bengali she could she was just talking to me and you know what even though i can't really understand a lot of bengali i i felt like we were communicating <laughs> Uh, so that is something a film does to you so uh, yeah coming back to it i really like charulata i i really like babel ba- babel and uh, there are uh, there is this uh, co- film called my name is justin yeah 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 but i don't know why people don't talk about that film a lot that was a film sir which i didn't watch in my film studies class i was admitted in the hospital Yeah, this is a very <laughs> <laughs> during my college days, I got this uh, bad flu, and at that time, swine flu had come. So they thought it's swine flu, and they admitted me, and I was in isolation. So they had this small TV and UTV World Movies. There was this channel yeah. called UTV World Movies, and this film came, and I am isolated, and I'm watching this film in which she is also isolated. It it moved me so much. This is a film that I've talked about so much, like. you know people talk about stockholm syndrome and how people can but this was the proper way of showing what happens to a person when the whole identity is taken away from them so yeah these are yeah i'm and i'm glad you allowed me to segue to my next question because the whole thing was do you have to you know when you say that you're in you're in isolation and and that person is in isolation and there's a connect that happens right because that's what films do to yeah, us yeah. because sometimes they reflect parts of us that that we don't even know existed exactly, to us exactly. so tell me with both koko and with karnan what was it that resonated with you so uh, you can do you take one first and one after <laughs> so what happens is uh, sir i don't do a lot of films I, it has been 5 years of my career and i am on to my 10th film only so uh, but what when i so, you know when i dedicate myself or commit myself into a character uh, i try to be in that particular space at only at that particular time i cannot function with multiple cinema at the same time uh, probably my weakness i don't know so you're trying to say that you do only one film at a time i try my max to but with covid my schedules got a little right. you know because everybody was starting together but otherwise i make sure that i do only one film at a time because uh, let's say when i was doing june and when it get, got over I I remember calling Jojo Chetan and I remember crying like I was like appa i miss you so he and he could he could get it and he was like oh, it's okay it's okay mole kare anda but <laughs> even though he is not that old but he but you know portrayed my dad's character and I, I I could feel the pain of being away from my father and that was very different to you know to feel that towards a yeah. character and a Uh, a person who just acted it yeah. and uh, similarly when i did stand up and it is an uh, it is a role of an intimate partner rape victim and i wouldn't say victim a survivor so uh, that really shook me like in the sense i couldn't sleep for nights i i started showing symptoms of ptsd i feel like because uh, you you go so much into the skin of the character it affects you and with koko what happened was um, uh you know uh, there is this uh, <clears throat> point in your life when you become an actor and you start trying to absorb things from your co-actors 
and my co-actors in the film, most of them uh, were the kids who were playing the team. And there are 15 of them and only Mamita is the one who is an actor. Okay. Rest 14 of them are real Coco players. I was learning from them about the game. I, w I constantly was asking them, do you feel like I'm the coach? Do you think I'm doing it right? Because they'll also ask. So this is give and take. Eventually, I, f I actually started feeling like I'm the teacher. So, uh, and you know, the way they would look at me, uh, there, is, uh, there is this beautiful magic that happens off screen, I feel. Sorry. When you try to imbibe a character so much, it just gets stuck with you. And when we were, there is a scene where we are parting, like towards the end. Oh my God, everybody, whatever we are doing in that scene, particular scene was without glycerin, was <laughs> without anything. It just came out. Yeah. Uh, so those are the emotional moments where you get stuck by and and I actually for the first time in my life I actually felt like what a teacher would feel you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and how blessed am I that when I get to I get, get to become a doctor I actually feel like a doctor when I get to become a teacher I actually get that emotion right. and uh, with Karnan oh my god Karnan was such a long journey <laughs> how long was it actually so we started in Jan last year I uh, met Marisa in August. So, I right. so there is the story that you were you had your leg in a plaster and and you know he he kind of uh, saw you in the trailer of June and mm -hmm. liked you in that and therefore cast you. Is that right? So what happened was uh, I'll say what happened with him. So he was searching and he was meeting actresses and uh, eventually I had previously done a photo shoot without makeup uh, for Bala's, uh, Balasar's film. Okay. With he, they were searching for uh, girls and they wanted no makeup look. So I had taken that pictures but for some reason that project didn't uh, work out. Like it didn't happen at all. Right. So by chance Mari sir saw this picture of me in a green kurti and he's like who is this girl and he uh, checked my filmography and he saw June is there on Hotstar. He saw the trailer, he, I don't know for why, what reason, he you liked asked, it. Surely you asked him. Yeah, I asked him and he said, ki, you know, uh, he liked the way I portrayed the different age groups and how, uh, how it was, um, how it felt real. Like how it felt different and yeah. real at the same time. That's what he told me. And, uh, and he said I had captured emotions pretty well. This is what he told me. Uh, and after that, he, uh, the production house called me and said they want to arrange a meeting with me. So wants to meet me. I was like, okay, but I'm in Bombay and I have a plaster. So what had happened was I was doing a film called Finals in which I am a uh, sports cyclist. Right. Uh, so... <laughs> There's a scene where I got injured. I fell from the cycle and I had two leg ligament tear on my right knee. And we kept on shooting with it. But because we kept on shooting with it, it got really worse. So I'd gone to Bombay to get it checked up because everybody was saying surgery. I was I just wanted to see whether there was another option. So this call came and it was like from Mari Salvaraj. I was like, he, and I hadn't watched Parirum Perumal. But I had heard so much, much about it. Yeah. it that I badly wanted to meet him and uh, then they said Danush sir I was like okay but, but I'm coming with on a wheelchair with a plaster they were like okay come <laughs> so I remember I came in a wheelchair I landed in Chennai I went to sir's office I had the stick and his office was like they had, it had stairs I'm like going up one step at a time and he spent around one one and a half hours with me we just talked randomly we talked I don't know what, there was no audition, there was nothing else. He didn't make me do a scene or anything. Right. He, just, he was just kept on talking to me and at that time I didn't know a single word of Tamil. I was very, the language was very new to me. I was just speaking in, a, uh, you know, Malayalam in Tamil slang. <laughs> but we communicated and then he asked me whether I had seen Parirum Perumal. I said, no sir, I haven't, I, I couldn't find it. He said, it's there on OTT. I was like, okay, sorry sir. He's like, why don't you watch it? And I was like, okay, then there's this very next room in his office where there's a big TV. Wow, you yeah. watched it right there. I, I sat there, I watched Parirum Perumal in his office. And, uh, and I'm somebody who talks a lot, <laughs> as you can see right now. The moment the film ended, I, I couldn't get a single word out of my mouth. Like, I was so speechless because it had affected me so much and I remember going to his back to his office with teary eyes and I was like, I just stood and he's like, what do you think about the film? He was very interested to know. It's like, I, I, I don't know what to say. And then we started talking about the film and I could get to know how much what he is as a person, what his ideologies are, right. how he, and then when I saw Parerim Purimal, I knew how it would translate into a cinema. When. So yeah, I was very excited. 
Yeah, so tell me Rajesha, when uh, you, uh, I mean, you're, you're talking about entering a character and, uh, uh, you know, owning it to the extent that you feel the character. You said you missed your Joju George as your father when uh, yeah. June happened, after June happened. How does this process work in a language that's unfamiliar to you and also in a dialect that is a little strange? And you probably haven't been to that place and you have to dress a certain way. And there are so many things to keep in mind as opposed to, I'm not saying June is easy, but at least yeah, there are some surface things that are going to come a little easier to you. Exactly. Here it's like from scratch, everything is, how does that process of entering a character work then? I remember having this conversation with Rahul, uh, the director of Coco. I was telling him, once I've done Karan and I feel like it's a little more easier for me to do Malayalam. Because when you are comfortable in your language, you know what is the word you want to replace this particular word with. When you are saying Same something way. very naturally, you know what is the replacement. But when you do not know the language and Sir Mari Sir's style of working, his style of making is very different from the uh, uh, conventional fa filmmaking that I am used to. Like there is no order of it. There, today we will know this scene, but suddenly he will feel like taking that. Uh, suddenly he'll feel like capturing that animal so it's all like you have to be like always in the skin of the character that you have to run you have to do this you have to do that so you have you you just have to be present completely present there and uh, and the language and the especially with the slang it was very difficult for me to get, like, understand because there are 492 people acting with me who are from that particular yeah. place and everybody talks in this particular slang chennai tamil is much easier the it's other tamil one actually but yeah. yeah but like in the sense it's a little more easier yeah, yeah. even coimbatore you you get it. this is very fast so you miss words in between and i'm like what <laughs> what but Good thing is we went 10 days prior to the shoot. I went 10 days prior to the shoot. I went to the location. Every day morning I used to start, uh, I used to wear the costume and I used to go around the village with these girls from there. So that helped a lot because and these people, they welcome you so much. They have so much love in their heart for you that they were ultimately teaching me, Amma, apadhi illa, apadhi panenge, apadhi illa, apadhi panenge. Like what, for example? For example, uh, there is this, um, um, like, Mm, what is this article so they'll show you no not like this maybe there is no shot of that in the film right. but still you when you do that you. so uh, you know we are used to acting with uh, no water in the kodam but act like there is water in the kodam right <laughs> for the film <laughs> So they'll tell you how to hold it yeah, properly. Yeah, exactly how to hold it, how to balance it on your head. So these are minute details which might just come in one montage. Yeah, yeah. But when you go to that, go deep into that lifestyle, I feel like automatically because for a girl like me who is brought up in the city to go into a village yeah. and get in, and this is not like a Kerala village. Again, there is a cultural difference. There is a different way of doing things. And uh, Mari sir had made, uh, had told me right in the beginning that there won't be any dull makeup. He said, you have to look like them. So uh, I, we used to just bake ourselves in the sun because I feel like it's not very fair of people to uh, expect uh, somebody with certain skin color yep. to just put on makeup and look like that. Yeah. I feel like that's not fair. So uh, because my skin tone is a particular way, I, we, we, uh, we got tanned and we, uh, so that was another thing. The costumes were all a part of it, but ultimately it was Sir's input. He knew pretty well what meter, what way, how to say. So what I did is I just made sure I forget everything I've learned so far right. and I went like a clean slate. And I was just taking instructions and uh, and that I feel like that process helped a lot. Those 10 days in the beginning right. uh, quite helped a lot. Right. So one of the things that any actor or actress cannot change is their face, uh, the way they laugh, the way you're smiling right now, <laughs> the way you're sitting probably because these are certain genetic traits, which is why a lot of actors, they, you find them very fresh in the first 10, 20 films, but then later uh, when, when you know they're going to laugh exactly this way, when, when you know exactly. So one of the things that struck me most about June is how even within the same film, you managed to be about three or four different Rajisha Vijayans. I mean, I'm still stunned by that performance. How do you, uh, obviously I know I'm watching Rajisha Vijayan yeah. because 
you know, I'm not that like divorced from the surroundings. I know this is a film. I know that this star is there. I, this actress is there. She's acting. But at the same time, my mind is also telling me that the Rajesha Vijayan I saw earlier is very different from the Rajesha. How do you process that fact that you really can't change the way you look to a large extent and people know that it's you, but yet they have to also pick the character and say, I have to buy that. How do you do that? So with June, there were multiple factors, sir, because I had done Karikin Vellam, George Ettenspuram and uh, Cinema Karan. I was, uh, I, there was a particular way I was looking, there was a particular age group I had come to. So first thing was to take a deliberate break. So I made sure that I take a break so that audience might little bit, you know, uh, forget me. So and I was taking a break from everywhere. You, you took the break just for June? Yeah, just for like June. Like deliberately? Deliberately. Okay. Deliberately I took a break and I went and did theatre in between because I was free. Uh, and I came back and what, you, what you said about the walking is I made sure that when I was uh, the 25 year old June I was walking a certain way but when I was a 16 year old June I, my pace was faster uh, my there was this uh, there is this body momentum in your there is like a spring in, in your step yeah there is a spring which actually comes a little uh, you know it, it slows down the, by the time you age I made sure it's there uh, the way I speak when I'm younger is a lot more faster than after that and the way I cry is a little different these are things that I deliberately tried like I tried my best how, how, how would you like would you like do you do a little bit of research or what would you do of course I do I and I feel like once you uh, this is something I told somebody I feel like acting to an extent is abusing your emotions uh, because if I'm feeling really sad but I have to do a happy scene I'm really abusing myself mm. my mind saying that listen no do this so I feel like a mind is so bloody powerful that if you keep telling yourself that you are this you are this you are this you are this you eventually start being that so that that's why I told you only uh, uh, try to do a film at a time yeah so yeah? that you don't yeah, so I keep reminding myself that I'm 16 I'm 16 I'm 16 so my body also tries to uh, be 16. This is like, you know, you, you're going to sleep and you're like, tomorrow I have to wake up at 6 a.m., 6 a.m., 6 a.m., 6 a.m. Automatically, you'll wake up at 6 a.m. Right. So that powerful your mind is. It's just about using it a little bit more. One right. thing. Second is, of course, the research. And I was, because we were uh, shooting in school, I, I used to watch how how they are walking, how there is so much. And act, a good actor is somebody who observes a lot, I feel. And when I was in the college, I, I used to observe my sister, how she's doing. Uh, because she was in college, what what are the traits? So uh, I feel like with a little observation, it helped me quite a lot. Even with Coco, what I've done is I st I started YouTubing videos of the coaches, and I uh, and uh, here Maria is not a coach who really wants to be a coach in the from the first group. Yeah, yeah. Right. She and she is not a. Uh, I wouldn't say she's a successful athlete either. So, uh, so being a f successful athlete and being a coach is a very different thing from you going to a school for the first time. So there is this uh, slow transformation that happens to right. this character, and she gets transformation because of these kids also. So that has to be slow and it has to be evident. But because we, but we never shoot in the scene order. We don't say ki okay today we'll shoot the first scene, tomorrow second. <laughs> it's all random right. right according to the location so it's just about reading and uh, it's it's an advice that I got from Khalid Rahman the director of my first film and love he used to tell me that uh, before acting this is the advice I got in my first film even if there is no scene uh, just remember what you are doing till now as a character what what was your journey till now till that particular scene so that gives you an emotional continuity emotional continuity which affects your physicality also right so uh, these are sir it's all about uh, trying to take as much knowledge from people around you right so, so when there is <laughs> that's, it, it's, that's a wonderful answer and, and i want to ask you now in when you're doing a, when you're doing this in june uh, you are consciously doing this research yourself because it's a it's a language you're familiar with it's an it's a milieu you're probably familiar with even if it is a little bit off your age limit or something like that, there are, I mean, you've been through an age or you can, or you maybe you know somebody in that age. When it's something like Karnan, where it's so completely different, are you entirely, you say, I'm giving myself to the director? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I you, mean, don't you do research. See, the, again, the observing part, the director cannot come and sit and observe for me. No, it's my duty to have a certain homework done for myself. I, you know, I, things like the Kodam and all Yeah, that. exactly. 
you know in karikin vellam i am an architect there is no not even a single shot of me doing the thing but <laughs> i used to do that for one month i used to sketch for a month without knowing what it is but i used to do it because it helps your body language and body language is such a huge part of your acting i feel so when i went for karnan i was observing these girls because sir or or mountain region le how they would walk it's not how they would walk in a plain yeah. area and uh, it's not the way they walk in the sun the way they would walk in the rain they they way they would hide from the rain or the sun so there are minute details no so majorly observation helps then second was a conscious decision to learn the language right as much as i could in the small time period that i had i was trying to learn as much as i could and ultimately when it's com- so completely out of your comfort zone and when you know your filmmaker is such a you know genius it's also about completely giving yourself to that uh, director in the right. sense you do your hard homework but at the same time you listen you try to and mari sir is not somebody who will say everything in sentences like he wouldn't necessarily give you instructions completely in whole sentences the words there is this eye contact there is this way he will show sometimes he will act and show so it's all about uh, trusting the director because ultimately a film is a director's yeah uh, you know uh, craft yeah we are all tools i feel that he's using to you know tell his story so there is so much about trusting the director also how do you trust a director like in a film like finals <laughs> it's a new director yeah, you you sorry almost all my films are no, no, first yeah. or second time directors yeah so so uh, nagarjuna i interviewed him a few uh, a couple of weeks ago and he told me i i, I mean I asked him the same question it's like how because this is the director's first film in telugu so i said how do you like know that okay you read the screenplay you know it's a good screenplay how do you know that this director is going to be able to put this like on on thing and nagarjuna said something he asked for a narration and if he can sense a passion in the director then he knows that this person can somehow do it is that your thing as well of course that's that's a major thing na uh, but some people are not that great with narration they are so good at uh, story t- like in the sense storytelling through frames but they might not be that great yeah. then it's about understanding that you are not that great at narration you bring someone to narrate okay Uh, that's when the writer comes in or you know the uh, storyteller comes in but sir majorly for me not just the narration it's about talking to that person random things like you did with mari selvam exactly i feel like that conversation is where he felt like i'm apt for the role similarly i at the same time i'm also reading him so when a new director is coming to me and re, uh, you know talking to me i get to know how he is going to portray it what his ideologies are because i feel like as a filmmaker you have a certain responsibility at the same time even in a commercial cinema you have a certain responsibility of i wouldn't say for being politically right but at the same time telling it you know yeah. uh, giving everybody equal space giving closure to characters uh, you know uh, these are things that you will get only when you talk to that person right. so I, i keep on having long long conversations with these filmmakers and sometimes in 10 minutes you'll know sometimes in an hour time you'll know it's at the end of the day it's all a gamble i feel yeah it's all trusting you know it is it is and and like you say it's it's trusting in a very that could also be a little harmful because you are like you know you're using your emotions in a certain way how do you feel when like you know there's news one day that there's this mutya murli that an uh, biopic that's happening and there are there are reports everywhere that uh, rajesh avijan is going to be the thing and then monday the project is dropped and you're looking forward to something like that how do you process something like that i was hurt <laughs> like extremely hurt uh, i probably there are reasons why it didn't happen yeah. I, i completely get it but then uh, when you're prepared to do something and you you feel like you really want to act uh, with opposite a person you really want to work with the certain people and uh, when i heard the story it felt like it's worth telling because it was a very fun uh, story the way it was not like the serious Uh, biopic it was a very fun thing so i i wanted to be a part of it but when it didn't happen yes it broke my heart it uh, like a little bit it broke my heart uh, but what to do you can't really uh, you know just keep that baggage on top of you you have to move on i feel you know it does it, it take hurts. time for you to move on it took time <laughs> of course it took time but i think eventually we all move on yeah. uh, but i wish it would have been made as you know you have that wish no i wish right. 
you, you just spoke about wanting to act opposite Vijay Sethupati. Oh <laughs> he's, my he's, God. He's, yeah, and so of course the the question comes with you're acting with two titans in uh, in uh, Karnan. Uh, one of them is Lal. He's like the most amazing, amazing, I, amazing, amazing person. Him. And there's Dhanush who I think is easily the best actor in Tamil cinema today. It's it's like you know. It does okay let me ask you from a Rajesha vision point of view and, and then from the character point of view okay. first as a person when you know that you're going to act against two very very titanic actors like this does it are you like a confident person or do you say or you do you get a little nervous do you say oh my god you know i've got to match up to them do you does your mind become cluttered a bit uh, with Lal sir, I didn't feel anything like that because I had worked with him yeah. before. So uh, I knew I'd be like very comfortable. It will be it will be like a reunion. I, that's the word I use. You know, when you worked already worked with somebody and you again work with them, you have that kind of rapport. But uh, with Dhanush sir, of course, I was scared. Uh, in the sense, um, first of all, I was scared because I didn't know the language. Second of all, I have heard from so many places that he's a single take artist. So when you hear that he's a single take artist and you're like, my God, what if another take goes? How would he react? Would he be comfortable with it? And if he's not comfortable, what if it affects my morale and what if I don't perform well? But everything changes the moment you meet the actor. And I feel like they have reached a certain place because they are that humble and they are that supportive of their co-star. And uh, the moment I met him, uh, I was really nervous and that's not something I'm used to. But because I had a little bit of confidence until then, but because this is... You've a, never felt nervous in front of an actor before, Dhanush? No, no. Okay. Uh, probably because uh, in my first film, I was nervous about doing that particular character because that's a very complicated right. character which can easily go overboard. So I was nervous about that, but I was not nervous with for acting with Asif or Vijay Chetan or Ash Chechi because uh, for some reason I had already I had already been an anchor. So I'd seen these yeah. actors before and all. But here, a brand here, new person. And here, sir, in Tamil, I feel like you see them like a godly. Yeah. There is this godly yeah, vibe around yeah. stars. Yeah, it's right? also like the yeah. Yeah, uh, and I and I was scared like because of all that. Okay, what if, what if, what if? But the moment he came and the moment we did the first scene and uh, if at all I messed up, you know, he would be very encouraging and he'll be like, it's okay, ma, do it. So that one word is more than enough. Right. You may be able to recoup and do it again. But in case if, if imagine his expression had changed, I would have been shattered. Yeah. But he doesn't. That is why he is who he is today, yes. right? So uh, that mattered a lot. But of course, I was I was nervous. But um, that's probably because I'm in a completely different arena, new yeah. people, new language, all that. But now I feel like I'm much more comfortable. Yeah. So when we see you in your next Tamil film, you'll be a much easier. I, yeah. I feel like it will be much easier because I'm I'm taking conscious decision to learn the language. Right. So the moment I know I get hold of the language, I'll be much. Uh, more comfortable. I will right. be much more confident. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, now I know that people here are uh, very down to earth and very humble and very supportive and all that. What did so, you think of us? No, I was like, I didn't have any, uh, like, I was not judgmental, <laughs> but I, you know, like any you know, normal person, I had apprehensions. Like, I don't know how this, because this, this industry is so new okay. to me. <laughs> I didn't know how, because it's, and also said, so this is such a huge film. Yeah. Like every day there are around 500 people on yeah. the set and I am not used to that. I have, I have been part of mostly low or medium budget films. Yeah. I am not used to these many uh, uh, you know, technicians on board, these many equipments on board, these many people uh, and these big stars. So I was like, okay. So it was what? a technical learning as well? Of course it was. Of course it was because I uh, then I learned how you actually uh, act in a film where there is so much crowd. I was, I always used to think, how is Lijo sir, Lijo Jos Pelishiri, how is he making this film? There are so many people in it. <laughs> Lijo is different. <laughs> <You should just. laughs> no, but there are so many people. I was like, how is he doing it? How is he managing it? But once I did Karna, now I know how crowd is managed. <laughs> so let's take love, right? Uh, again, a performance that I love. Uh, how do you maintain a secret in a performance see because films are shot out of sequence you've read the screenplay yeah. you know what is actually going to happen and i'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't seen if you haven't seen it see it <laughs> uh, but how do you 
keep yourself as unaware as the character at any given point is that also like the same thing that you said earlier which is being in the character that's the same thing yeah i okay. feel like that you know why that, that i feel like i'm not that blessed ki you say action and i can just uh, like how people say like mohanlal sir is somebody who you say action he just transforms i feel like i'm not that talented Pro, uh, my this is my process because uh, as you mentioned we never shot in the scene order so uh, especially in a film that involves a huge suspense or how do you say uh, a transformation or a revelation uh, you have to keep that <laughs> as a secret <laughs> and in love there is two deeptis there is a deepti which anup thinks is a deepti which who comes in the beginning and there is a deepti who's the real one yeah. so that i had to keep separately like uh, and rahman is a brilliant filmmaker he'll make sure that it's kept separately uh, he, he's again another director who won't say everything in sentences you just have to understand the director he'll not tell you sir and he'll never say good he's i'm if i he's the director i'm like some day please tell me it's a good shot some day please do because i've worked with you on two films i deserve it like at least say it's he'll just say okay and i'm like okay such a such a bad word i hate the word okay right now uh, but uh, yeah uh, jokes apart the thing is uh, when you get so much into the skin big and uh, uh, their homework helps so i was researching about uh, violent relationships i was researching about uh, um, you know marriage has gone wrong and i was talking to my friends who had ended up uh, separating from each other and i i started uh, reading about psychological stuffs and thanks to stand up i already had Uh, uh, you know i use i listen to ted talks i listen to people who are already gone through all, all right. this so when you do all this you ultimately start getting it and then uh, for me look of the character also matters so the moment you put down the costume and the makeup and you look into the mirror and you see another person there you automatically start believing that you've changed so these are all so all the departments help you in that and yeah. but eventually ultimately it's about telling your mind that this is that this is that i feel like uh, acting is something that requires a lot of intelligence it's not something that you can just come and do as a hobby like if yeah. at all if you want to do different Definitely. characters yeah. if you want to keep on doing the same uh, i feel like it's much easier today if you ask me to do another june it will be so much easy for me but from june to deepthi or june to maria francis is a huge uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know it's a difficult task so but to reach there you need to do your hard work you yeah, need to do yeah. your homework i'm not talking like i've done so much i'm just no, saying no, that no no but i'll tell you something it's like it's not easy to find a young actor uh, young as in like like you know somebody you've had to suddenly you see somebody sees june it's 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 a it's a super performance i mean i think you should feel very proud of it i mean like what whether rahman says it or not if it <laughs> yeah, matters please. i'll say it's terrific <laughs> thank <laughs> you, you know, sir so. thank you so i uh, hope he hears <laughs> this here now you you were an anchor like you said you know you were doing tv and stuff like that you'd met a lot of these people before uh does that help in in film acting no not at all like in the sense you do not have camera fear that something i didn't have because probably because of my course also i had faced a lot of camera uh you are not really intimated by actors uh but that was just in the first film but eventually the reason why i stopped anchoring or i why i was not doing both at the same time is when you do anchoring you have a certain body language there is a certain way you modulate your voice um, it automatically comes into you but uh when you're going to do a particular character you yeah. don't want that influence you do not want your voice to you know only modulate in a certain way or to have those hand moments right so that's why i yeah. are you an intense person rajesh like in what sense in the sense that are you like like when you're not on sets are you a fun person or are you a serious person i think my colleagues should answer this <laughs> yeah but <laughs> i think i have uh, my days of both okay the reason i ask this question is not to get into your personal space but to understand when you commit so intensely to a part and and you literally like go through this almost like a method like entering into a a a, a, a character uh, especially if it's a very intense character how do you snap out of that i mean yes of course being away from that set will probably help but you also you know have to do something to unclog your mind travel that's 
that's the that's my major thing which i do i mean on the set you can't you, you but you i have moments where i am me i have fun uh, i have been lucky enough to work with people who are really fun filled and i'm you won't believe the amount of fun i had on the sets of coco uh, we because of these kids they are so energetic you yeah. also start and uh, even on the set all of us technicians we like all of them were already friends so it was like a group of friends making a good film uh, even love it was like a reunion of friends so i have had my own share of fun right. but when you say that i have to unclog from my mind and you know get out and be myself travel i feel like helps me helps a lot okay. yeah because then it's me you know it's i i this is what i said one film at a time then some me time then another film this is what i would ideally love but because of some reasons at times it's not possible but i feel like uh where, when you do intense characters if you're doing fun film commercial films it's fine like how i did ellam shiriyagam yeah, right now yeah. with asif ali it was much easier because it's a fun film pakka commercial film but at the same time when you do a character like in coco or like a, i like how we said karnan or love or june you need that particular time in your life where it's just you and you have to come back you have to leave the baggage you have to because while doing stand up what happened is because she was this rape survivor i felt like ultimately i was carrying the baggage and it it started affecting my personal life uh, to an extent that i i started not distrusting people because that character was yeah. she couldn't trust anybody after what she had but why would i do it yeah. didn't happen to me right so you you need that time to uh, to keep, take it away you know from you and yeah. once you are detached from that project it helps you also right because Literally. you move on move actually on. Yeah, yeah yeah when when you work with actors uh, are you the kind of person who absorbs stuff from other actors like 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 i want like two particular actors i'm very curious about joju george and danush yeah. because i love both those actors uh, joju i've loved in almost everything he's done yeah. uh, and uh, is there anything that you picked up from from uh, these two people like let's say uh, uh, i mean i mean i mean technical stuff like like you know not not you know they humble not something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. but like something that would help you in your acting if it's not too much of a secret no <laughs> with george shetan uh, i see he is the one from whom i learned how much it's important to build your chemistry outside the camera to bring it in and by chemistry i don't necessarily mean romantic chemistry so chemistry is what happens between two characters right so uh, before like behind the camera also george chatton he used to treat me like i am his kid so uh, and and uh, it's also we are talking about june yeah june yeah, yeah. and uh, even with dhanush sir i what i've noticed is it's important to make your co star feel at ease when you are at a certain startup Uh, because ultimately it's give and take right so they both do that and uh, with george shetan what i felt is that uh, he he likes to do it in a go uh, like in the sense if we are uh, ultimately he would if for some reason he prefers the master shot first sometimes people go for uh close ups first and then i was like uh i i didn't ask him i was observing and it just came out of his mouth that that will be the best thing to do first so that you will know how to move rather than going for anything else and then he'll be like never say cut until the artist stops acting this is something he said because that is when you improvise right so this is something i have also done like in the sense uh there is the scene where i'm having beer with him you have noticed yeah. that's a one take scene uh, i mean other than the close ups which we went for the master was a one take scene and it was there was so much that we added on in that scene there was so much that was not written and the we get that space only when uh, the director doesn't say cut so he always says that let me let's do let's keep doing so that's one thing and uh, with dhanush sir I don't know how he says so many dialogues in a go. <laughs> My God, like uh, it's uh, when the dialogues are very difficult. Uh, it, like in the sense, it's not like chumma how we are talking. When it's big, big things which you are saying, yeah. and when they're like one or two pages involved, it's difficult for me. I swear, it's big, if you see Coco, I have those things. I and I have I have struggled there. I've struggled when I have to say two like two pages. Uh, you know at the same time but he doesn't 
and uh, I, I I was observing what it is and he will keep learning like even behind uh, before the scene he'll have the script paper and he wouldn't talk to anybody else he'll be in the character and we just go through the page that's something I observed what else is he doing there to create that magic is something I have to ask him personally but what I see is uh, this intense person who just completely transforms the moment it's said action he says it in one take and that and everybody will clap because we are all shocked like how yeah. is he pulling off pulling it off because even when you have to say we always go for cut no okay till now i've seen actors who do like okay three stand three lines will say now cut then three lines you will say now cut but no he likes to go it at right. and again an actor who likes to go it at one go so i feel like probably that's better rather than going for did cut. you ask him if he has a photographic memory there is actually there are actually people who have that right there's a word yeah. for it i did photographic memory yeah. yeah i think laletan has it everybody says uh, mohanlal sir has it um, i think he has it <laughs> <laughs> i haven't asked him but i think he has it so rajesh you're very you've been very vocal about the fact that you prefer quality over quantity right but there also comes a certain point in an actor's life when they are in demand and because one of their films becomes a hit and then everybody wants them and then you're like so if you ever there's a there's a do you ever like have you ever been in a situation where you want this role and this role and this role and this role because you know that you might miss them and they might go to somebody else and you won't get the chance to play those roles again in which case your process might get compromised because you like to yeah. be in yeah you know have you ever at times there are but then i feel like uh, uh, that is another mandematram <laughs> did you watch paglight not yet yeah. there is a scene where the doorbell is like it's it's basically a funeral and the doorbell rings and it's like oh la la oh la la okay okay to so question why you might when why no i was asking you like uh, you know when you have yeah, yeah, multiple yeah, that, choices yes, yes. yeah 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 Uh, so there are times uh, where i i feel like it will be another challenge which i should try doing like a little bit more films uh, it will be much challenging but when something so great comes along your way you really don't feel like letting it go also so i try to see if the dates are possible if it's about possible to work around it but then you know when you're working with uh, working in certain films where another big star is involved especially in tamil i have noticed that you tend you tend to go in different schedules for multiple reasons date shows or let's say covid or you know for multiple reasons uh, so when that happens this process that i talked about is a very difficult one to like you were juggling karnan and khokho yeah, yeah yeah um, another film also um uh, even a lamb shirayum so right now is a time in my life where my that process is not really happening because uh, since covid has like when since the lockdown has gone and we are we restarting everybody is restart, restarting at the same time so i have to incorporate the dates so then it's uh, right now it's a re, it's a really challenging time in my life because uh, if, I, but the thing is i go there i try to go a day prior and i try to you know just think about what i've done i try to read the script again right do you watch the rushes or ask them to see in no because can't really because that might be in the edit suit but i try to go over it in my mind yeah uh, what i've done what i've done and then i try to go through the script because script is a really important powerful tool the more you read i feel like so that is something that i'm doing that is what i'm doing right now but as you said when something really good comes you really don't want to let it go because you don't know when when will be the other time when you will get it right so yeah it's uh, there are difficult times <laughs> are you an actor who likes seeing yourself on screen because there are some actors who tell me that i hate seeing myself on screen because i only notice the mistakes what what i mean are you do you i love seeing myself on the screen but i also notice my mistakes like uh, but i always feel like oof this i could have done better but this i could have done better but i feel like you'll only grow if you feel that the moment you feel like ha perfect then what there's no scope for growth right. there are all in all movies of mine there are scenes which i feel like shit i could have done it better i could have done it better but i feel like that is that thing that will push you to uh, you know be a little better than who, who or what you are right now but i love watching because every time i watch my movie in first day first show i end up crying because you know it's like this closure that i get 
like i've traveled with a certain set of people i've traveled with certain set of characters uh, for so long or i've given so much of time and space of my in my life to that particular film that when i see it uh, reach its closure which is right. it's perfect end is seeing it in on the big screen right never in the mobile phone always on the big screen so when i feel like it has reached where it has to be uh, that is a moment so powerful that i always end up crying in my mind and it's not because it's a you know i feel like oh what a great performance what a great film no it's just because i feel like my baby has born kind of that's lovely <laughs> that's so emotional well, thank you so much rajesh it's been a pleasure talking to you because uh a lot of actors struggle to articulate process you know uh and i thought you did that beautifully and thank you so much for letting us into a uh, what must be a fairly private space because you know it's 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 to kind of share it it i mean thank you so much for doing that and uh, best of luck for both karnan and koko uh, i've seen koko it's a good film How great performance thank you uh, very so very good performance i uh, haven't seen karnan so i can't say anything about <laughs> yeah. it but uh, all the very best and thank you so much for coming for us for an interview thank you so much sir. i had a gala time like uh, it's it's very uh, it's i have been looking forward to meeting you in person let alone doing an interview with you because the of the way you know uh, well there is this bharadwaj rangan whom you all we all all want to because every time a movie comes you want to know what he is saying oh about my god it. <laughs> no because sounds, no sounds. that's oh, that's really because you have that credibility sir because i feel like you're never biased so uh, to meet that person in uh, like in person and you know have uh, talk to you for at least whatever time we had i i really enjoyed yeah. it and thank you so much for all the good words you've said and yeah uh, i think i think you're doing great work continue it and uh, all the best for films thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you. Hi this is Rajesha Vijayan if you like this video please subscribe to Film Companion South